Do you ever feel like a puppet, yanked around by the circumstances of life? One day you're cheerful and calm, the next, you're filled with dread and despair. Your mood seems dependent on external factors totally out of your control. Traffic jams distress you, rainy days depress you, busy work weeks exhaust you. If only you could discover how to transcend the ups and downs. Well, it turns out your experience of life has little to do with what happens to you and everything to do with your state of mind. In this summary, we'll explore both spiritual insights and practical strategies to raise your mental state and get you on track to manifest the personal growth and success you're chasing. The roller coaster of life doesn't have to phase you. With a little clarity on how your experience is shaped and some simple actions that can improve it, you can inspire profound inner and outer change. Chapter 1 Mindset Matters Most Have you ever noticed that sometimes, being stuck in traffic doesn't bother you? Perhaps you're on your way home after an invigorating workout, have your favorite playlist on, and are looking forward to a chill evening with your partner. The surrounding gridlock almost doesn't register as you bop along to Beyonce. On the other hand, you've inevitably experienced how agonizing a traffic jam can be. Maybe it's cold, dark, and wet. You've had an awful day at the office and will need to spend the entire evening doing a complete rehaul of tomorrow morning's presentation. The point is this, the traffic isn't determining how you feel. Your state of mind is. A situation that frustrates you one day might not phase you the next. Your external circumstances don't define your response, your mental state does. You're probably familiar with the two states of mind that humans oscillate between, low and high. A low state of mind is characterized by fear, anxiety, doubt, and cluttered thinking. A high state of mind has more clarity, focus, and confidence. Naturally, the higher our mental state, the better we feel and perform. However, as we go through our days, weeks, and years, it's normal for these states to ebb and flow. This is crucial to understand. Most of our problems arise from thinking low states are bad and that there's something inherently wrong with us if we find ourselves here. But consider a roller coaster. Sure, if it were your first time on one and you didn't know how it worked, that initial descent would seem terrifying you'd think you were about to nosedive into the ground. Yet you know that if you stay on the ride, you'll soon rise back up. The lows are just temporary parts of the overall exhilarating experience. So, yes, we want high mental states to be our default, because this is where we feel and perform best. But we don't need to fix ourselves when we're at a low. If we return to the roller coaster analogy, there isn't actually anything to fix. That said, there are strategies to help us maintain the highs and minimize the lows, and that's exactly what we'll explore next. Chapter 2 Minimizing Lows Maintaining Highs Imagine you're a minor league ice hockey player on the verge of making your lifelong dream come true, joining the National Hockey League. But in hyping yourself up for the big leap, you go eight games without scoring a single goal. Not only are you at a literal loss, you're at a mental loss too. You feel inhibited, insecure, and intimidated. How can you break out of the scoring slump before deciding to hang up your skates altogether? In the last section, we define the low and high states of mind we slide between as humans. We also discovered it's our mental state, not our external state, that determines our response to life. So what, then, determines our state of mind? Our thoughts. You likely know this from experience, negative thoughts lead to a lower mental state, while positive thoughts lead to a higher mental state. But we can break this down even further. Negative thoughts come in the form of one of the five Ds doubt, distortion, discouragement, distraction, and division. Doubt breeds insecurity, distortion alters truth, discouragement leads to giving up, Distraction turns our attention to the wrong things, and division separates us from our best selves. Fortunately, the key to flipping these thoughts and therefore your mind state lies in doing just that, flipping each of the five Ds. So, tune into trust to counter doubt, speak truth to challenge distorted thoughts, 
practice gratitude to appreciate life, use positive affirmations to muster courage, focus on what matters to avoid distractions, and unite with love to cast out fear and division. By understanding how negative thoughts try to bring us down and the strategies that cultivate positive thinking instead, we can begin to tap into our innate power and potential. Chapter 3 Oneness, The One Truth When Something Is True, It Reverberates Across Traditions, Teachings, and Fields. And something psychology, science, and spiritual scriptures all reveal is this, we are meant to live in communion. The ultimate truth, the one truth, is that we are one. Can you remember being part of a united group or team? Can you recall the sense of energy and indestructibility that permeated the atmosphere? On the other hand, have you ever been part of a divided group or team? If so, you likely recollect feeling drained, diminished, and distressed. When we perceive being connected with ourselves, others, nature, and the universe, positive thoughts spring forth and we enjoy a high state of mind characterized by love, power, and confidence. In contrast, when we feel isolated, divided, and separate, we loop ourselves around negative thoughts and end up in a low state of mind filled with fear, weakness, and negativity. Paradoxically, it's by looking inside that we remember the truth of oneness, while looking outside makes us feel separate. We live in a world of apparent duality, so if our attention is always on the external appearance of things, we'll be more susceptible to falling for the lie of separateness. Red flags that we're in separation nation include searching for answers and questioning ourselves, and feeling as if there's a hole we need to scramble to fill. This is what leads to addictive behaviors. We incorrectly assume harmful activities or substances can bridge the gap between oneness and separateness. There's a reason why successful addiction programs create community and encourage connection to a higher power doing so helps wake its members up from the delusion that they're alone. Fortunately, we don't need to wait to hit rock bottom to remind ourselves of this universal truth. At any moment, we can turn inward and see it shine through every atom of our being. Chapter 4 God, a relationship, not a religion now that we're clear on the one truth that everything stems from either oneness or separation it's time to reveal the underlying essence of this teaching. Most faith traditions believe in a supernatural force greater than ourselves, a divine power that created us. But even if you don't subscribe to any religious school of thought, you'll appreciate that, scientifically, everything is energy. Behind the physical, concrete facade of the world is a dance of energy and spirit. It's more accurate to say that we're spiritual beings having a temporary physical experience than physical beings occasionally encountering spirit. As such, we thrive through connection to our Creator just like a fish needs water. God is, in fact, less a religion and more a relationship. We are made by and for love, which is the essence of who we are. As we learned in the last section, disconnection causes distress, while reconnection brings wholeness. The added nuance here is that the most crucial connection we have is with God. When separated from God's love, we don't just suffer as we do when we're disconnected from ourselves, others, and nature, we also cut ourselves off from the spiritual source that energizes and sustains us. If we return to the fish analogy, it's the difference between a fish removing itself from its fish community and removing itself from water. The implications of the latter are significantly more profound. For us humans, the danger of distancing ourselves from God is exposure to the archetype of evil, which resides in the vacuum created. Evil generates further negativity, leading to an increase in the low mental states that we explored earlier. If left unattended, it can become a vicious cycle. The closer we are to our Creator, the less space evil has to occupy. In its place, goodness grows. And this goodness fosters the positivity and high mind states that boost how we feel and perform. You don't have to follow a formal religious or spiritual tradition to witness this chain of cause and effect. Remember, ultimate truths reverberate beyond any one teaching or field. But knowledge is power, and understanding the divine force behind the one truth will turbocharge your journey toward personal growth and success.
Chapter 5 Baptism, a lifelong practice Have you ever been blissfully unaware of holes in your roof until you're hit by a torrential downpour? Suddenly, those seemingly insignificant cracks present one heck of a problem. Just as rain exposes leaks in a building, adversity exposes wounds and weaknesses within us. And like with a leaky building, there are two potential outcomes for us, to let life's challenges tear us down, or to use them as opportunities to heal and become stronger. We've now explored each layer of the one truth, oneness is the absolute reality, and God is the spiritual source of all. When we connect to our Creator, ourselves, others, and nature, our minds get flooded with positive thoughts, leading to more consistent higher states of mind. And because our state of mind determines how we respond to the world, we experience greater well-being and performance, growth and success. Theoretical clarity aside, you may be wondering what this looks like in practice. Consider the Christian ritual of baptism, meant to signify a person's immersion in the Holy Spirit. While this sacrament is typically seen as a one-time event, we can take inspiration from its intention and renew our connection daily in smaller ways. Some simple examples include prayer, meditation, reflection, reading scripture, and giving thanks. Whatever flavor you choose, continual immersion is what will give rise to the virtuous upward cycle. Remember, we are spiritual beings who are having a temporary physical experience. We don't need to postpone the bliss of heaven until after death. We can invite divine presence into our lives at this very moment, by keeping our spirit connected to the source. So, live from oneness and enjoy a slice of heaven on earth. Final summary While life brings both highs and lows, remembering the truth of oneness your essential, connected nature enables you to experience sustained well-being and performance wherever the roller coaster journey takes you. As a spiritual being on a physical plane, your connection to God is the lead domino in the positive chain of cause and effect leading to personal growth and success. The one truth is yours to live. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.